without further ado, I'm going to hand over now to Laura, I think. If I get my let's check in my notes to make sure I've got this right. Yeah, Laura, you're with us. I saw you come into the room. Hi, I've lost you now. <clears throat> Where are you, Laura? Hi, Okay, so Laura from Articulate has been working with Kerry Gibb, the DHT at St Columbus, um, and they've been working with learners from St Columbus and with seven related cluster primary schools, and they've been having a focus on well-being across the P7-S1 transition period. So Laura, over to you. Yep. Hi, folks. Um, you'll need to excuse my croaky voice. I've uh, got a wee bit of a cold. Um, so my presentation is going to be absolutely nowhere near as fun as Kyle's. I can't live up to that, I'm afraid. But um, what I'll do is I'll share the presentation that I have um, and um, kind of talk you through the process that we went through in terms of developing this project with St Columbus, which is a, a bit of a different project than the last one that we heard about. Um, so I'm going to try and play, but once I hit play, I can't hear, I can't see the rest of the team screen. So if, if Barbara, can you just tell me that that's, you can actually see that? Yep, can see that. Okay, thanks, Laura. Great, thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Um, so, yeah, so basically, um, oh, have I just, no, you can see, still see it? Not now, it's gone. No. Hang on a wee second. I'm I'm a total teams like I don't I just teams is the one that I've never really got my head around, so I'm really sorry about that. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> uh, where are we? You see it now? No. No, sadly not. Right. I'm, do you know what I'm gonna do? Rather than keeping it wet, rather than going full screen with it, I'll just show you it like in the window as I see it. Yeah and flick through so you can actually you can still see it yeah that's fine laura that's great thanks that makes more sense and it's easier and then i can sort of see what these are up to as well <laughs> so um yeah so i'm laura food i'm um, the producer here at articulate cultural trust and um, we're a small arts organization working with um kind of main focus is working on young people that have had care experience but also um other young people who have got similar challenges that might hold them back in in education or employment or life and we work with them in creative ways and um, building creative habits of mind that help them to uh, survive and thrive and um, so like barbara said we were tasked with working with um st columbus secondary school and the, and the um, primary seven transitions program so there are seven programs seven primary schools um who feed into st columbus a uh, high school um and we were working with them um in fairly short term interventions to create dialogue around about the transitions process um and using creative um activities to encourage dialogue and to to get them thinking about, about their well-being in relation to the transition so we started off doing a bit of research with the schools particularly to find out what are the common themes um, across the schools and what are the more specific challenges for um the different schools so the schools are kind of spanned quite um, geographically apart and um, have various different challenges so we wanted to really learn um, what was a widespread issue and what were the more particular concerns that are perceived in each school by the teachers and the head teachers um, so we kind of spent a bit of time learning that so there was the general things around about anxiety and um, a kind of quite high anxiety levels across the, uh, the majority of school pupils and um, then some about um, like long journeys to getting into the school whereas they're used to going to school in a small village for example and then they have to get um you know a longer longer bus ride or whatever it is into the school um, and some of this some of the areas there were um there was quite a holistic approach to 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 the family support as well so some of the families were quite concerned that once that pupil transitioned up to high school they would they would maybe kind of miss out on some of that support that they'd been getting from um the school and generally just kind of concerns about um, respect and inclusion for some of the smaller communities where perhaps um, they, they're maybe not, not used to 
being in sort of busier environments or in sort of bigger towns and things like that. So we kind of um, looked at how we might um, reach all of those, um, kind of address all of those concerns with a project that was spanning over seven different schools and obviously not the kind of capacity to work with each of them in depth. So we developed a, an approach uh, which was about creating dialogue, so delivering two two workshops per school um, and using um, our, our wellbeing indicators to prompt dialogue and to create something tangible like a character or a story or a journey that the children can remember and can be used as a legacy for the project going onwards. So um, in these sessions, we talked, we used the indicators as a prompt for dialogue. So getting children to think about um, what, you know, what safe means to them or whatever. And what we found was really interesting was that a lot of the, te- a lot of the schools and pupils had quite a good understanding of what Shinari uh, was. The, you know, the, the, there was dialogue in the school already around about the indicators, um, but perhaps sometimes they didn't kind of connect the dots as to what that meant in terms of their own well-being or their own readiness to approach new tasks or, you know, to feel comfortable with new environments or meeting new people and things like that. So we tried to get them to respect, to reflect on the positive feelings that they get from a certain, you know, an indicator. So if they are given responsibility, how does that make them feel and things like that? So a lot of the dialogue in those sessions was around about that and then getting the children to translate that into tips for a toolkit for others to apply for teachers to use in classroom and for to go home to families as well so that you can create dialogue at home um, in, a, in the family environment so that people are kind of um, given the opportunity to talk about any um, anxieties or concerns that they've got about moving through to high school. Um, so we worked with an artist called Katie, Katie Guthrie, she's a, a graffiti artist. I always find that graffiti art carries a kudos that I can never achieve. Um, and this, the, Katie went into the, the into the schools and worked with them to do illustrations and then they built these illustrations into foam characters that represented um, how they related to the indicator. So each school got a different indicator and we had a, a dialogue and they kind of created these characters that um, will be then, which are made into a, a series of animations, a series of posters and into the toolkit itself as well, which can be used um, going forward in class. So these will be printed out onto lanyards so they can be brought out throughout the school year so that there can kind of be a rhythm to, to the children kind of you know, having discussion around about well-being and what good well-being practice uh, means for you in terms of how you go about your tasks and things like that. Um, so when we were moving on to the design phase, we sort of used trauma-informed design and accessible design. So we collaborated with an art psychotherapist on the programme design and also on the aesthetic of the outcomes. So looking at... Um, Trauma-informed colour palettes, for example, and um, we researched dyslexia-friendly fonts um, and how to set those on different colours and things so that they were really easy to, for everybody to read. Um, and we gathered feedback from people with dyslexia about um, the, the legibility of that. Sorry, I obviously dropped that off at the end of that comment there in a bit of a rush to pull this together. Um, and so we would just sort of put these these kind of characters and posters together so that they, um, you know, were a, a sort of really accessible resource that people could use. Um, and this was the outcome. So we have, these are the posters that I'll show just now. Um, due to a number of different reasons, our project was a wee bit delayed. We were supposed to sort of launch this at the at the kids' um weekend week away the, the whole the activity week that they went on but um unfortunately the, there wasn't space in the program for us so we actually presented this to the kids today uh, today and yesterday up at their transition their, their high school visit which was quite a nice way to put it in but it does mean that we're still waiting for last week's from the feedback from the from the children um so 
we've kind of framed these, um, framed each of the indicators around about, you know, how, what does it make, what does it feel, you know, like to be safe, to be healthy and things like that. And each of these characters have come directly from a child's design. So in safe, you see here, um, you might or might not be able to tell, but the kids did yesterday, which was great. So it's a pillow. So the kids uh, reflected on, you know, being at home, being in their beds is a safe place. So around about that idea of comfort. Um, and we've just got a few prompts in here that are around about, you know, um, little kind of soft, soft, like soft um, ways of introducing um, thoughts about sort of safety and how to feel safe and the exact same thing with healthy. So um, if you can't tell, this is a, a, a swimming avocado um, who has eaten loads of healthy food. So we tried to keep things really like touch, really um, in tune with what the children had actually designed in the, in the workshops. Um, and the same thing again for active so that's a, a sport a basketball a sports ball um but you know thinking about things that are not just about activity but about maybe kind of mindfulness as well but keeping your mind active so there's like a little kind of um sort of activity based thing and um, that people that the children can read through it just keeps that thought process um forefront in their mind about um, being being conscious about positive well-being practices um, uh, the same thing for nurtured. Nurtured this is actually a pizza. If you know, if believe it or not, it's a heart shaped pizza. Um, where the children came up with this idea that um, of like nurtured is about caring, about love, and they thought about being at home, feeling comfort, and things like that. Um, so it was it came out as a heart shaped pizza. We've been told to add a crust onto so that it looks a little bit more pizza like. So we'll do that. We'll go back and do that and add that on. Um, then we've got achieving and responsible and um, the pencil came up, with a few of the kids did a pencil so we've put in little tips here around about, you know, kind of making it all right that some of these words are a bit scary or a bit overwhelming and that we don't need to think of big, big things to achieve to feel like we're achieving things and breaking it down into smaller, um, smaller chunks. And that kind of that narrative sat really well with the young folk yesterday when we went through the toolkit, um, and they really kind of responded quite well to sort of thinking about that you know achieving doesn't need to be that you've you've won a trophy or whatever, um, and then responsible. So a lot of them went to their phones quite surprisingly for us for responsible. I think most P7s are around about the age where they've maybe just got a phone they've been kind of allowed to have a phone so they attached the phone as something that you know people at home parents and caregivers were like right well you're old enough to have a phone now and um, but they also thought about the utility of the phone in terms of that they can set alarms they know they can check the time so that they know when to be home in time for and things like that so there was a whole load of things that kind of um, they attributed to, to having a phone and we tried to kind of create a dialogue around that and let let it be really pupil led in terms of what they kind of because some of the indicators I think can be quite abstract but we kind of tried to let them think about what it meant to them or pin it on something and them to develop the characters based on that um, and then the same thing for respected and included so all the way through the series there is this sort of these little characters that are practicing good habits in terms of um, well-being indicators and the same thing is then translated into the toolkit but in the toolkit toolkit there are more there are more prompts for dialogue so um, the, cl the, the class teacher for example could pull them out and you know flip to a certain card on it and then put, put them into groups to have a discussion so it's really all about dialogue as we found that um, in the short space of time that we had with the children, the dialogue was where the most important thing was and how they sort of really seemed to come alive when, stop, when talking about these things and relate them into their own lives. Um, so I've not got the toolkit and I've not got the animations to show you yet, but that's that's kind of where we've reached with it. Um, so I won't keep you for very much more time. Um, just if there any, just any questions. Thank you so much, Laura. That's really interesting. I've just I was sort of reflecting on the fact that there, you know, there are Shinari resources out there, but the the, the power of the ones that we've seen from you today is that they were created by the learners themselves. So they will 
absolutely engage and it all makes sense as you say even the more abstract ones that you talked about there because they've actually been on a journey and um, had to engage on a very personal level you know through these indicators so yeah it's an amazing project thank you does anyone have any questions for Laura or comments I think another thing I was thinking was, you know, you've got there, uh, again, like, the, you know, the first project we heard from, um, there's a legacy, there's a sustainable element that can come from this, um, which I think is also very exciting. Someone had their hand up. Sorry, I, I missed that. Hi. Um, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. Hi, Laura. Um, I, yeah, I really enjoyed some of the characters that the, the, the children created. Um, I wondered about the animations. Are they going to be distributed in some way or...? or? online or yeah 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 so the whole the the posters will be used in the primary school and the secondary school um mm -hmm. and the um the animations will be into uh they're sort of, they're sort of like a like a gang of of characters who who practice positive well have positive well-being practices so they'll be sort of framed as like you know come and hang out with the gang and learn bits and bobs that type of thing so they'll be kind of put together into um short individual ones but then a sort of longer one as well and we can put them out in social media and things like that okay thanks thank you Thank you so much, Laura. Really, really interesting and more to come by the sounds of it, which is fantastic, that uh, hopefully can be part of the resource that, uh, that we that we put onto the National Improvement Hub. So thanks. And I know you've got another appointment, so I'm not going to keep you any longer. <laughs> Thank you for coming along. Thank uh, and giving you. us a flavour of the exciting work you've been up to. Thanks, Laura. Cheers, folks. Bye.